I just finished painting up this uh, Iron Snake, uh, my second attempt at non-metallic metal. Uh, and I must say, I'm really happy the way his power sword came out and his armor and his cloaks. Okay, I, I, I could have done a better job. Uh, I would have liked the, the yellow come out a little bit better. But anyways, um, some criticism I have for myself. And if you have any, please put it. I should have made this a little bit wider, it's brighter, it stand out a little bit more and should have dried it off when I glazed it so I don't have these watermarks. Uh, my color choices aren't the best, but you know what? Uh, overall, I think it was great. And if you want to see more chapters or even Iron Snakes, let me know. Um, I'm always looking for new things to paint and let me know what you want. Uh, with that said, uh, I guess we'll jump to the video or just skip to the end and just, you know, see it. Bye. So I have bought the Scale 75 non metal paint set in the hopes that one day I will be able to be like all the cool kids and paint it. Uh, anyway, so we're going to start with graphite, which is just a gray. I, I mean, we're going for a steel look, so I guess that's where we start. And since we're doing iron snakes, I know librarians are always blue, but hey, how bad could it be if we just change it up a little bit, right? Maybe I need to water this down, but everything I've seen scale 75 they never watered it down anyway so let's go ahead and get all the armor and uh thin out your coats as needed i guess i'll thin mine out a little bit except for the shoulders don't forget iron snakes don't have that there you go that's uh everywhere i thought the light sources would be so now I've got the water in my first gray. I've got it down to about this consistency. And I'm just gonna come in here. And I'm gonna slowly glaze it back and realize I probably should get a little more consistency water. There we go. Now we just glaze it on through. And I'll make sure it all dries, so I'll just work the other side. And I'll do the whole thing five or 20 times. Just, there you go, that's what I have. I've worked it over, it looks okay. <laughs> but you know, you gotta, you gotta try, future Gabo. Um, so I got inside gray, this is a dark blue. I've watered it down. All right, so I got a nice little layer here. Or glaze and now I'm gonna work it down to the darker areas right that's that's the plan I guess I'll just keep that up for a while there you have it I've worked them down so it looks like he's got some shiny darkness there and I've Water down my matte black, which is the darkest black I have. So it's just a heavy glaze there. And I'm gonna go along the deepest parts of my, of my guy. I think I need a little bit more water. Well, now that I'm working on it, I think my black is so dark that I'm gonna dry off my brush, clean it, put some water on it, and I can just kind of feather it a little bit. So I did the best I could there, try to get the darker areas uh, with the black and man, this, I'm getting better. I mean, this is what the point of the model was. Uh, but now we're going to do the last highlight, so I'm going to mix a white with my, uh, whatever that color was. And now I'm going to do my little, there you go, now that I have my waters, and I'm just going to go to the brightest section and just kind of glaze it in. And there you have it. Well, now I'm going to do my secondary little dots, so like 
little reflection here and there and then probably one like right there maybe um, maybe maybe some up here and there you have it um, his armor uh, overall it's not terrible for a first time attempt but I, I do notice like my when I'm glazing I'm too wet uh, and I'm getting these water stains and I think that's kind of my issue and I went back and watched some videos and that's definitely what it is uh, so I tried to do one here and get the best I can and well you know this is a this is a challenge for me so I'm just trying to do something new and I also grabbed the Scale 75 leather equipment. So I'm trying to use their recipe, but it calls for an airbrush I don't have, so I'm adapting as best I can. So we'll of course do what we can. So it calls for this. It calls for these two colors to be mixed, which is just dark brown and camo red brown. I'm just gonna do a 50-50 and apply it to everything. And I'm just going to get the gloves, his coat, uh, just any, any of the fabric. Uh, I think I'm going to leave his hilt alone. I'm going to do that in a leather, but I'm going to do it in a lighter leather color just to make it stand out. And maybe the same thing with the book. I'll do it the same as the holster. Just to have something a little different. And I'll see on the other side, I guess. There we go, he's looking all right. Uh, now we're gonna have our two colors. I put a little bit in there. Uh, and it's gonna be a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna do is leave like the recesses, like down here. It's gonna come along. Let any of these darker areas just be dark, right? Thinning out my paint to kind of get those glazish layers. It's going to take me longer, but hopefully it transitions well. And it's kind of what I did for this front one, which now I'm worried that I know something and my glazing's better. It won't be the same. But that's okay. We're going to just go up to that line and just leave it alone. And for this guy in the center there, we're going to do our best we can. Just kind of hope for the best in there. Here's my layer, and I'm just going to start mixing a little bit in here and just try to get it a little bit lighter. I'll probably do it maybe one more time before I move over to like my light uh, deserty yellow kind of look. I'm just going to keep these areas right let, try to leave a little bit of that layer behind so you can see hopefully you can see i'm leaving a little bit of space as i come in here so like right here i got a black and i got a brown and just try to keep it so it transitions over a little bit All right you got it real dark down there so we'll just kind of come up to the lip, but not go down in the hole. Just get these little areas here. And I think this would be the last, maybe the next one will be the last layer I do, anywhere underneath. And with the lighter ones, I'll focus more on the tops. I've worked them up in layers and you may have to do more layers it's just up to you uh, so now I have my what is that desert yellow it's just a tannish light yellow uh, and I'm gonna slowly mix them in here my little guide says this is what you need to do to highlight so I'm gonna do what I have to do to highlight it there we go just some water
And since it's a highlight, I'm just gonna try to get the top areas, right? This is I've been doing the whole time. My hand slowly wanders a little too much. Like back here, right? Just get along the top. Maybe come down to about here or so. This one little line there and then leave that it's gonna be a little bit of shadow as the, the cloak wafts around in the wind like right here is a little little gap so maybe I'll leave it up like that I guess do your best and uh, we'll compare notes. Hey, he's coming along not bad. I'm just going to keep this, mix it up in, mix this in, and make it a little bit lighter. And I'll probably do this in maybe three steps. But each time I go, I'm just going to keep it a little bit higher, right, than it was last time, and a little bit inside. So. Like I feel like there's gonna be a seam right there from a push in, so I'm gonna just make sure there's a little bit in between the two. And back here, just a little thin line right down this little middle. And just anywhere I feel like there might be some folds, really separate it. Uh, and just stay to the tops. Nothing on the inside. So like this is maybe as much, but up here that'd be all obscure. Down here would be obscure. So maybe just this. And well, uh, hopefully it turns out okay. There you go. That's what I got. Not bad. And I just went ahead and combined it one last time. And then after this, I'm gonna do my highlights. Um, edge highlights with just the desert yellow. So I'm just going to come in here and just kind of hit the highest points, right? Anywhere it's really kind of high up. Maybe even like as it comes down here, it's kind of folded underneath, so maybe I won't go right there. But this part, right, maybe get some of this as it comes down. This one looks like it's pretty good, but that one, I don't think I'm going to touch because it's obfuscated by the other highlights. And that's just kind of what I'm going to do as I work my way around. There you go. He's looking, he's looking passable now. Uh, so now we're going to get the shadows because that's what the guy tells me to do. So that's what I'm going to do. I got ink, chestnut ink and a brown ink. Uh, all I've done is put them in here, and I'm just going to 50-50, and I'm just going to line them up. And I'm not using the wet palette, because I heard if you use a wet palette with inks, it'll fall apart. So I've already done this one, so it's just the darkest recesses. So let's do like an easy one, like right in here, right, right where the fold is, and it's kind of hiding a bit. Let's put that in there. And then maybe like right here, kind of inside, a little dot. Anywhere else, maybe like we'll edge along his little pistol that he never uses because he has force powers. Or force powers, he's <laughs> got psychic powers. And we'll just, uh, we'll just finish that up on our own. So good luck to you. are done for the most part uh we're gonna work on the power sword all i did was grab some uh crystal blue and we're gonna base coat it that dark color and any kind of darkish blue ought to do all right and just get in there just to start the uh, highlighting all that blue we'll, we'll go over this part i guess at the end and try not to get too much in there but that's okay his base coat, his sword, that nice blue. All right, now that his sword's all blue, I'm gonna go ahead and I, I grab some uh, 
fogged eye blue. It's just a light blue. Uh, I mix it 50-50 with my previous one here. And I'm just gonna sketch out a blade. I'm just gonna do a simple like tri pattern, I guess. So let's go this half or third, this third, and maybe this third of the blade. And on the bottom side, let's do the same thing, but no one's ever gonna see this side. No one's ever gonna see this model except for three of you watching made it this far everyone else just tell me i just have farts in my mouth here we go uh once that dries we're gonna glaze it up and hopefully i'll won't make the same mistakes all right so everything should be done on your blade now uh, to try to avoid my mistakes from last time, I'm going to try a war paint mixing medium. I think it's just Lamia medium. And it should give you a very nice uh, kind of glaze. I've kind of played with how much I want it. I got about to there. So hopefully I don't have the same issues I did when I was doing the other side. So I'm just going to start up here a little bit and just kind of work my way towards the darker sections. Right, and, and just each time try to go a little bit less into the area. And I hear it takes about 30 seconds to dry, so we'll give it time to dry properly. I don't know, I keep watching my, my YouTube videos. There you go, he's looking better than last time. <laughs> Uh, so now I just have my blue, and I'm going to just highlight kind of the, I guess the, the, the parts, the brighter, brighter sections I'm thinking of, right? So this is going to be right here in the middle, and then right here, in the back. Same thing with the bottom, although, you know what, the bottom is coming out better than the top, which is... A bit disappointing. So I ended up going back and redoing my sword. Uh, I forgot to hit record when I got to the part I was fixing, but the lighter areas, I just use a white and the blue and get a little bit lighter. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and get my white and blue combo. And I'm going to come along the edges. Hopefully using the side of the brush, it works a little bit better that way. And I'm gonna do one right down the center, but the camera won't really pick it up. But also get a really nice fine brush and then get a little bit of this blue on it. And I like to make sure it's okay first. Hopefully that's okay. And I'm a little cracking effect, so I just pick a spot and kind of, you know, a little Michael J. Fox there. Just let it kind of wither around. It's a, it's a force sword, right? So you should have like some force powers going to it. Once you're done with that, you can hit it all with a blue wash to kind of unify it together or leave it as is. And there you go. I think the sword is looking pretty good. Now we're going to paint this section here. And honestly, if you just paint it once and like a yellow, you, you can probably just call it quits. So I'm going to try to do a little extra uh, just to make it special. I'm just going to come along here. Brace my hand as best I can and try not to get any of the blue. And just work my way around. I and I, if you're having a problem with your yellows, I found putting a light brown and then going up to a yellow has always helped me. So, you know, if you're having trouble getting the 
paint on. Try something a little darker and then work your way up. So now I got some uh, Bay Blonde, which I'm just gonna use to highlight uh, or glaze up like we did the sword. And I'm gonna do like a streak right here. So this area up, I'm gonna glaze it up, glaze it up, glaze it up. So like this kind of imaginary line is gonna be higher. And it's really gonna be difficult for, me, for you to see uh, with me painting it, but hopefully you'll see the difference. There you go, I ended up just doing it off screen because I couldn't help, but I just got a yellow and then a lighter yellow and a lighter one to try to get a little look and I don't know, it didn't come out as well as I hoped, but you live, you learn, right? So now I grab some true copper, which is the darkest goldish color I have. And I'm gonna work the sword, right? Avoiding the skull, I'm gonna paint that differently. Uh, the keys is, uh, yeah, we can do his belt buckle, why not? And then anything else I want to be gold, yeah, we'll make the skull. That's how it is in the painting, or an example. And then I think that's it. Well, maybe, maybe this little guy too. So we'll get all that, uh, and maybe that too. That's what they have in the examples. There you go, I got all the metal now. And I'm gonna get a flesh wash, or if you have like a light brown wash. And I'm gonna use that on all the metal just because I like it a little bit darker of a tone. And then I'm gonna build it all back up with uh, some different goals we got. Just be careful not to hit anywhere else you got. If you do, just wipe off your brush, get a clean brush, dip it in water and just kinda dry it off and soak up what you can. There you go. Uh, it's going to take about 30 minutes for this to dry, so I'm going to grab a gray. I just got a stone gray. This is a light gray. Uh, it's because the chapter I have uses white for the shoulder pads. So I'm going to get the gray and fill that up. Give it two layers, and once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and get the lightest gray I have. Not a white, just the lightest gray. And we'll fill it up there. So let's get this kind of lighter gray off. There you go. And to finish it up, I just got, uh, I think I'm using Brain Matter Beige. It's just a off-white. And I thinned it down, so it's about maybe this consistency. And I'm just gonna glaze it right here into kind of the center. Leave a little bit of that shadow as I work around. And then out here, it's okay if I go up to the edges. Uh, we're gonna ink that later. Just kind of keep working it. Always coming up to the center here and just, just let it dry and keep working it for a bit. There you go. We'll finish that up uh, when we're done with the metal. Now that it's dry, so I got greedy goals just to... It's just the next layer of my gold. And I'm gonna try to avoid these recesses Kind of build up my little highlights here. All right, just kind of work it. Like, the skull might be a good example. So I work all the skull and do the little lines around. That way we have uh, some recesses in there. They're all shaded up. There you go. So now I'm grabbing the brightest gold I have, which for me is our Army Painter's Greedy gold. I'm gonna just get all the little highlights here. So they're kind of shining. Right? So, like up here on the sword, I wanna come down the center here. I'm gonna come down this side. All right? It's kind of hug these edges. This is a little bit darker, so I don't think I'm gonna have it there, but I'm gonna have it all here. And on the tips of these little nodules there. Not necessarily the underside because I might be a little bit of shadow. Now I mix my shiniest silver with my shiniest gold and I'm just gonna get all the little highlights. So like right here, 
little dot, right? These little points on the edges. And then like the eyebrows. Maybe up here a little bit. Once I'm done with that, I guess uh, it's back to uh, some leather. We'll finish off the, the belt the belt and stuff. There you go. I think it's looking okay. Um, now we're going to do all the other leather. I got Rot Brown Primer, which is just a brownish red. And I'm going to come along here. And just very carefully get the base coat and all the other lead, red sections, right? Uh, leaving that alone. I'm going to go ahead and get this. I think I have the book in a different color. Uh, and we'll, of course, get the pistol belt as well. Now, you know, all this leather is nice and reddish, so according to my handy dandy guide, I need to take this desert yellow and mix it with my red. So let's just kind of move it out here. Just kind of blend it up and see what we get. There we go. Let's uh, just highlight now. I got my highlights and uh, yeah, I mean the picture just shows the top and the bottoms as I drop all my nice stuff behind me. So let's just kind of do this. Maybe we'll keep working it, right? So after I get everything highlighted, I'll add a little bit more yellow. I think that's gonna be the play. Right, and he, he actually used the holster. So I guess the holster, like these areas here where it's like an edge highlight and then they kind of glaze it into here a little bit. So we'll do that. We'll, we'll build those up as well. I guess along the edges here, we'll just kind of make it a little bit worn. These little lines like that. Maybe you go about halfway with our first group. There you go. He's looking all right. Um, so now I'm going to just add a little bit more of my yellow in there. And if I was doing an army or, or a squad, I think I would keep it to certain ratios, but I'm not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here for my next one, just get a little bit of lines. Try to keep them thin. Make it look like it's worn out a little bit. And then... Once again, just give it little, little chops, little happy chops along the edge here. Anywhere I want it kind of worn out. Um, there you go. And we're gonna do one more lightening up. Uh, I don't think I'll show it, but you're gonna do the same thing. Try to be a little bit less than you were before. As you work your way around and just use that chopping motion. Give yourself a kind of weathered look. So now I'm using a 50-50 of intense crimson brown nut, chestnut uh, wash, not wash, uh, inks. And I'm gonna very carefully uh, try not to, try not to mess everything up. So anywhere I want the deeper recesses. I'm going to come along and add it. Uh, and be very careful about it. And there it is like in between these right here. Maybe. Anywhere I want the shadows. I went ahead and gave them that. I don't, I don't know what to paint it. Like making sure I get kind of like in here in the corners. Right on the sides a little bit. 
just take your time and also like maybe right in the middle of one of these I'll have to get some back on my brush there you go all right yeah just take your time because you don't want to make a mess and there you have it he's looking okay um, at this point I mean it's pretty much just small details um, nothing major uh, I'm going to do his face, his banner, and then his book, and then after that, I'll just paint a couple of wires with some random colors, and I mean, whatever you want. But let's get his face. So I just got some tan flesh, which is the darkest kind of flesh color I have for a Caucasian, and I think that's just, uh, I just stand out the most. And you just try to get it in there as best you can. It's your best brush. Now that I got his face, uh, I'm going to take Barbarian Flesh. And I mean, I put way too much that I need here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Just come in there and highlight. I think I'm going to do one more highlight. I mean, he's under a cloak. It's not like... It's not like you're going to see a lot of it, right? And... There you go. And the first highlight there, second highlight is do do do. And we're done. <laughs> uh, we can try to get his eye. I'm not going to. Uh, well, maybe I will. Uh, but I'm just going to dot it with a white. But there's no way I'll catch that on camera. Uh, I wasn't able to capture it. All I did was white and there's a blue wash to give it a little, a little something, something. Anyways, moving on. I got uh, Abomination Gore, which is a dark red. And I'm going to use that on his shoulder. And I've already inked the side there. If you haven't done so already, you can ink it or black, put it black so you got a nice little border. If you want to do this face screen chapter. Uh, but I'm also going to do the same thing on these purity robes. We're gonna build. We're gonna build all these up the same way, and we're gonna have a red book, which I forgot to paint with the gold around. That's okay. Hey, Cal. And once again, if I was doing a chapter, I would have a little more technical to this, but I'm just gonna kind of feed it in until I can see it. Yeah, it's a little bit lighter. Once I see it's a little bit lighter for the uh, what is it, purity seals, I'm just gonna come along and leave the real recessed areas kind of dark, right? Kind of work it in, and then for the book, same thing. Like that little line there, we're gonna leave that alone. And maybe only come up part way. Once again, kind of heavy glaze this. Leave some of these areas open. And uh, if you are doing the iron snakes, let's go ahead and tidy this up a little bit. And for the next layer, I just mixed a little bit more of that red in. And I'm going to start making these little boxes in there. I think I'm going to do one more. And then I'm just going to get a nice little edge highlight. Same thing for the book. Right, uh, I don't know, the book looks kind of all right where it is. Maybe I'll just give it a little edge highlight. Oh, okay, that's a giant edge highlight. And I'll hit it with a little bit of ink right there. All right, once you get done with how many highlights you want to do, I just got a nice little red. If you went all the way to red, then I'll get the next color up, I guess. Just give a nice little edge highlight so you kind of end up with something like this. All right, now we're gonna do the little purity seal. So I got some white and I really hope it flows. It's the hardest part of this is kind of get in here and yeah, well, we're gonna do it this way. We're gonna pretend this is a capital letter with a little squiggly and then a little dot there. There we go. That little squiggly, maybe 
you know, the capital letter. You just kind of have to kind of work it. Make sure you got a proper flow on your brush. Uh, I do the same thing here, try to get the chains. It's, uh, well, good luck if you're doing the Iron Snakes. It's going to be difficult. Hey, you go. You guys looking all right? Uh, I went ahead and painted his cables red. I don't know. I just feel like they look good. Uh, and now I'm going to do his pistol and his wires. And I'm just doing what I've been doing the whole time. A dark gray to a light gray. And honestly, I don't think I can teach you anything at this point. So we'll see the model at the end. Plus one. He's got a plus two. Uh, he's got a, he's got a, he's got a 